Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, Dr. Eric Russell and I continue our weekly servant leadership discussions, and this week explore the concepts of empowerment and delegation as they relate to servant leadership. Eric Russell, welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Good to be here. I'm excited to have the chance to talk with you again today and continue our weekly servant leadership series as we discuss a different aspect of servant leadership each week. We've been doing this now for most of the summer. and It's been a lot of fun to really dive in to the nitty gritty of servant leadership theory and practical aspects of it. Uh, Today, we're going to be focusing our remarks on empowerment and delegation and how these principles connect with servant leadership. And for listeners who may not have had a chance to to catch our previous uh, weekly servant leadership discussions, I would encourage you to go back into the catalog of podcast episodes and and find our episodes because I think they're really lively discussions and uh, hopefully you'll find some really good insights uh, that might help you as you're trying to lead your organizations. And for anyone who hasn't joined us previously, uh, by way of introduction, Dr. Eric Russell is uh, an associate professor of um, emergency services at Utah Valley University and an HCI research associate. And uh, Eric and I go way back and it's always a good time to, a good opportunity to have uh, these conversations with you, Eric. Yeah, I, I, I have really enjoyed um, this, 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 uh, experience of, of being able to just dialogue on sermon leadership in, in a kind of an organic way, you know, pick, pick the topic and then we go back and forth on, on things instead of reading stereo instructions to people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. Um, well, so like I said, today we're going to be focusing on empowerment and delegation to incredibly important concepts and principles for effective leadership generally. Um, but also specifically within the the servant leadership framework and philosophy. Um, So maybe we can start um, with a brief explanation of how empowerment and delegation fit into servant leadership, and then we can go and explore uh, each of these concepts more specifically. Great. Uh, Would you mind giving us a little bit of a primer on the connection between empowerment and delegation and servant leadership? Sure, absolutely. So um, probably 16 years ago, um, Dr. Kathleen Patterson um, did her dissertation on the virtuous constructs of servant leadership. And she got into the readings and writings of um, Robert Greenleaf, the father of modern servant leadership. And she found that there was seven, seven virtuous constructs of the servant leader. And then Dr. Winston, he did his dissertation on the virtuous constructs of the servant follower. And those are great too. We'll get into followership probably in future talks. But Dr. Patterson found that one of the seven virtuous constructs of servant leadership was empowerment. And it goes to the heart of the pragmatic questions of servant leadership Uh, specifically the one that asks, do your followers grow as people? Do they become more autonomous, more wiser, freer, more likely themselves to become servant leaders? And so from the writings of Greenleaf, the pragmatic questions that were posed in the original essay, The Servant as Leader, Dr. Patterson was able to pull empowerment out of that work and show um, that it is 
one of the cornerstones of servant leadership. And then on top of that, that work was um, quantified by Dennis and Bocinera when they developed their servant leadership um, assessment instrument. And so that actually went out and tested the virtuous constructs that um, Kathleen Patterson had discovered and put the mainstream really to where you can use that instrument to, to do um, an assessment on servant leadership within organizations. I've used it myself in my own, in my own research, but that's really where empowerment came from in servant leadership, because it's really about you take an individual that, that is at the beginning of their, their career and you build them up, they're growing as a servant leader. And then they get to a point where you can then through trust, and through that intrinsic motivation, through that uh, self-efficacy of the follower, you as the leader can then hand them empowerment. You can empower them, you can delegate to them, you can gift them authority, and they give to you trust that you will support the decisions that they make. So that's really where it comes from uh, within the, the, the concept and the philosophy of servant leadership. Yeah, great overview. Um, and, I'm sure most of the listeners, uh, whether or not um, you have any background in servant leadership or not, um, you've definitely heard the terms empowerment and delegation, and you've been in workshops and seminars where these have been discussed and, and how to improve them. Um, but I do think it's, and, and, and we're going to dive into these specific concepts as well, but I think it's it's really important to see the connection between these concepts and principles and how they uh, actually go back to servant leadership, uh, because I think that provides a framing, um, a more powerful framing for the concepts. And as we try to implement them in our own leadership styles and practices, um, because empowerment in its very, at its very core uh, should be rooted in this idea, this, 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 uh, approach and framework of the leader as servant and the leader who is not all about themselves, but they're there to lift everyone around them and thereby be lifted themselves. Um, that's empowerment and that's, that is servant leadership. So, so sometimes if we talk about empowerment separate from servant leadership, we may, I think we may do a disservice to the concepts of empowerment or delegation and the power that they have because we, we might give the false impression that you can, you know, successfully empower your people and be kind of an, uh, an ego driven tyrant boss, you know, like th those are not mutually, um, they are mutually kind of exclusive ideas. Um, they, they can't coexist. You can't truly empower people if you're not a servant leader. Um, and so now certainly people can empower and, without thinking about or, or realizing they are a certain, certain leader, maybe they don't have a vocabulary, they don't realize that's what they're doing, but that's what they're doing. And so um, connecting the concepts, I think is really key and important. Yes. So well, you yeah, go ahead. Because it, in toxic organizations, people think empowerment is dumping stuff onto your people. That's not what it is. It's, you know, burying your people in tons of responsibility with zero authority is not empowering your people. It's breaking them. And that leader that you described, that tyrant of a leader, they do it all the time. They don't back their play. They give them zero authority whatsoever in decision making, but all of the responsibility. As a matter of fact, that is that is an ongoing issue right now in, in organizations is that is that very thing is. Well, here's all this responsibility. Go ahead and run with it. Um, yeah, if you have to make a decision, you need to run it by me, though. You know, it's it, it is a yeah. yeah. All of, all of the responsibility and accountability, often without the title or the pay to support mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know, if things don't go well, then you have a scapegoat as a leader because you can say, well, these these people I delegated to them. It's their responsibility. They're accountable, not me. That's not empowerment. That's, no. that's outsourcing your own accountability. Um, that's right. That's, that's watching your own back. 
yeah. and and that's not actually supporting your people. So yeah. that's that's something totally different. And I agree. I think that that's faux empowerment, and it's super prevalent in organizations. And a lot of leaders think you know they pat themselves on the back and they think, well, you know, I did a great thing today because I I gave this challenging this challenging task to this person. Um, but if, if you're just piling on people that are already overworked, people who are on the front lines, and now they have to to pick up your extra work um, without any protections, without any um, sort of additional resources, without any uh, additional like mandate from from management to to help it happen. You know, you're setting people up for failure, and you're setting them up for burnout, and and you're you're protecting yourself. I'll grant I'll grant leaders that people who do this, you know, they're it's probably a savvy political move because they're protecting insulating themselves from accountability. But that's not good leadership. No, no, that's it's nasty. It's just one of those noxious behaviors that we have in organizations, and it's it's across the spectrum: public, private, for profit, non profit. It it happens across the board. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I was I was having a discussion with a team yesterday. Um, it's not specifically related to empowerment, but it, I mean it's related, but it's 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 tangential. Um, but it illustrates kind of this disconnect when we use some of these types of common business terms and leadership terms. So we were talking about um, collaboration, and we were talking about reciprocity, and we were you know talking about those types of concepts. And we were trying, you know, the, the discussion in the team was. Are these like inherently connected concepts? Are they mutually are are they separate concepts? Can one exist without the other, and so on and so forth? And I brought up the point I've seen it so many times where people say that they're collaborating, um, but it's not reciprocal at all. It's completely imbalanced. Um, and and I I brought up to the team several examples that they were familiar with. Of, exam, uh, of experiences just in the last year where there was supposedly kind of this collaboration where you had different players that were all partnering on this big initiative, um, but really it was just a few people that ended up carrying most of the weight of, of the initiative. Um, and so the others that didn't participate very much, I'm sure they were all very willing to take credit for the outcomes and they were very willing to, to herald this as this great example of collaboration, cross division collaboration and such. Um, but it, the, the reality was it's a perversion of the term collaboration. Uh, it's not actually collaboration. True collaboration should be reciprocal. It should be balanced. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I share that just to, to illustrate the idea that empowerment, we can't, just because we might use the term empowerment, that doesn't mean it's actually empowering. Uh, and so we we throw these terms around in management and in leadership all the time um, and think that just because we say it and just because we're giving responsibility to someone that's empowering, it, it's just not the way it is. Um, so again, connecting it back to servant leadership and recognizing like if I'm, my intention as a leader, if I'm seeking to empower those around me is not to outsource my own accountability and responsibility it's actually quite the opposite i'm taking more responsibility and accountability for not just myself but everyone around me and because of that recognition of that accountability i'm trying to help everyone else be their very best self their very best employee be the most productive they can be have the best outcomes they can possibly have and so my efforts to help empower them um, is giving them all the support they need uh, giving them the ability to be creative and innovate um, and have a decision-making autonomy as they're going about their work because I can't, I don't have the time to micromanage them or to sign off on every last little thing that they're trying to, to do. Uh, I'm truly trusting in them. I'm truly um, leveraging them. Uh, that's how it connects with, with servant leadership. And if, if I'm not that type of a leader, chances are I'm using empowerment in a perverted way that's actually exploiting my people. And that's the antithesis of, of certain leadership. Yes.
Yeah, that man, that's a good word, exploitation. A lot of times people think what they're doing is empowering and empowering and delegating to people and they're in fact exploiting people. They're taking advantage of them. Um, something that a lot of leaders are unaware of is the fact that they sit in a position of power over others. They forget it. You know, sometimes even, even good leaders forget it. You know, people who say, I have an open door policy. Come and talk to me about anything. It's like, mm, no, people have self-preservation on their mind. You know, they're trying to, they're just trying to survive and keep their nose above the water. And so leaders will exploit followers because followers feel like to the leader that the leaders go and especially a good leader they're like you could say no at any time when when i come to you and i say you know hey we have this issue and and you know there's a problem the leader's like well you have the option of whether or not you want to say that, that you're taking this on but you as the follower is standing there in the office going holy hell they're just about to dump a bunch of work on me and out of self-preservation you can't say no you know, that, that's why I love the books like um, uh, Greg McEwen's uh, Essentialism and The Art of Saying No and things like that. It's like, that is such a position of privilege. You know, somebody who isn't a member of a union with a specific job description or like our spoiled butts without a tenured professors at a university, most people don't have the luxury of saying no. They don't. And so... We exploit our people because of that. Because out of self-preservation, a lot of times your, your, your followers will not say, listen, I am bogged down. What is it that you're going to take off of my plate? I talk about, when I talk about how we exploit our workers, I have people picture the, the great camel, you know, and you have the Benduin that is out there and, and he's loading this camel up, you know, with straw. And all of a sudden, this single, what, this single gram of straw, this one thing, this magnificent beast is buckling under this weight. And this one single straw that gets put up and boom, it just breaks this, this large animal, you know, that straw that broke the camel's back. Think about what that really is. It happens in, in, in organizations constantly. It's that one more thing that we do to people where we think it's, well, we're empowering, we're delegating, we're, you know, lean management, lean management, lean, lean has gone anorexic in a lot of organizations, straight up, okay? And so when you used that word exploitation and exploit, that is, that is probably the best, that's probably the best word to use when it comes to what people think servant leadership empowerment is and what empowerment and servant leadership really is because people are exploited when it comes to this stuff if you need something done and you have to delegate something to your people you have to empower a follower right and you're going to empower them with whatever task it is you as a leader have to be consciously aware of what they already have on their plate and you have to be willing to take something off of that plate because if they're already working X amount of hours, like a lot of salary people are putting in 50, 60, 70 hours a week, well, the time that's being taken away to do this other job is being taken away from their families. It's being taken away from their downtime, which we know through research that actually the more time they can have off with their families and off gas and get back on track, the better they are at work and the more innovative and creative they are to where they're not just in a, this survival situation. They're not in that lifeboat. Okay. And so the key of empowerment versus exploitation is you understand that people only have so much bandwidth. People only have so much time in a day that they can spend in whatever the project is. And you as a servant leader being aware of those things, know that when one of your followers would be phenomenal at whatever this is, you yourself, conscious of what that individual is already doing, fully aware, takes something else off of the plate because they can run with this. 
And when you bring it up to them, you do it in a way that is complimentary. Be like, listen, I got this thing for you that you can rock and roll, but I know you're doing this, 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 and this. I want to take this off your plate and I want you to leave this out because I think you're the best person to do it. Because sometimes when you take things away from followers, again, self-preservation, right? I got a sick kid at home and we need our, our health benefits. They take that personally. And so if you go after something that's on their plate, but you go after it the wrong way, like, like they just get an email saying, hey, I'm moving you off of this project before you tell them what they're going to be empowered. You just put them into some type of an existential crisis. Okay. You just cause damage to the individual. So it really is also about the approach too. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think people want to feel indispensable in their jobs, right? Uh -huh. And so if, if they're really good at, at different programs, tasks, initiatives, you know, running um, projects, you know, especially if they put a lot of time and effort into it, they have emotional connection to it, but they also feel like that's, their value to the organization and that's making them indispensable. And now you're coming along as a leader and you're saying, Hey, I'm going to pull that away from you. I'm going to give it to somebody else. That can be like a huge, that can feel like a huge slight, even if the intention is simply to uh, lighten their load and to even out the burden across uh, the team. So we definitely need to be very careful about that. Um, but we, we definitely can't just keep piling on and, some of the best employees are the ones that we are inclined to keep piling on because we know they're good. We know they're productive. We know they're successful. We know they'll do a good job and we trust them to do a good job. And so the natural inclination of a lot of leaders is to just say, well, you know, this person, they're my A plus player. So I'm just going to give them another assignment, give them another project, give them another task. Um, and those people, because of whether it's self preservation or, you know, they're, they're, they're vying for the next promotion or ego or whatever it may be, you know, they may be really um, disinclined to, to say no. And so then you just keep piling and piling and piling on. And then eventually the weight becomes too heavy to bear and people burn out or they choose to leave and you end up losing your best people or they, they mentally disengage even if they don't leave and, and they find ways to rebalance the scale, um, you know, to their benefit. Uh, because they're, they've been overworked and exploited. So it, it's a, it's a, it is a tough balance because you don't want people to feel um, slighted, but you also can't pile on. Uh, and as long as you're intentional about it and you're aware of it, like you said, you're aware of what their load is, you're aware of all the things that they are involved on, and you ha just have a, a frank, you know, open dialogue with them about it and say, hey, you know, these are the types of things you're already doing. There's some other things that I would love to have you involved with, but we have to prioritize because you can't do everything. So let's discuss, like, how, how can we balance this out? Just have that conversation. Be open. You don't have, it doesn't have to be covert. You don't, you know, I, I'm a big fan of transparency. Just have the open conversation and, and work it out with them. And they'll appreciate your honesty. It'll develop greater trust. They will feel um, supported and empowered. Um, in relation to the discussion and, and the, the, the projects that you're having them work on. And it's just a, such a better situation, but that requires a little bit more time, not a lot more time, but a little bit more time <clears throat> to, to take that kind of approach as opposed to just like shooting off a text or an instant message or an email and saying, Hey, I, I would like you to, to take this on. And I suspect, I know this has happened to me. I suspect it's happened to you too but I have been the recipient of those emails and those phone calls repeatedly, you know, where like, can you, Hey John, can you do this? Hey John, we, we, we know you'd be great. Can you do this? And it kind of strokes the ego a little bit. Cause you're like, Ooh, they, they, they think I'm good. They think I'm special. They, uh, they value me and I, I'm showing how indispensable I am to the organization. So and to an extent, you know, like I, I, I'm very pleased by that, but then I'm also thinking, man, I got a wife and six kids at home. Um, I can't just keep on doing things indefinitely. And it, it's only been in recent years that I've gotten better at saying no to people when, when they approach me. And it's, it, it was a hard thing for me to learn to do uh, because I like saying yes. I like um, how that feels to, to make people pleased and happy. And I like 
being able to contribute. And I know I will be good at what they're asking me to do. And, and so I want to try to do it, but you got to be reasonable with yourself as an individual employee and leaders have to be reasonable too. Uh, I was just, just this morning um, in my role at the universe, one of my roles at the university, I was emailing um, a faculty member about potentially serving on a hiring committee because I know this particular faculty member would be amazing, would have the, my, the right framing and mindset to approach the, the, the specific position and how we want it, want to, um, to uh, manage it. And I, but I had to take pause because I know she is a really productive faculty member who's already doing a lot of things and I can't just endlessly dump on her. Uh, and so we did, we just had a discussion about it. We said, hey, you know, here's this thing. It's not gonna be a huge time commitment, but it will take time. And, and it's one more thing you have to like keep at the forefront of your mind. Um, so there's mental bandwidth issues, you know? And we just had that discussion. And, and ultimately she decided, yeah, that's something she would wanna do. But I said, okay, let me help you with this over here. Cause I know you're, you're doing this other thing for me. Let me help you with that. And just having that open dialogue, she felt appreciated. She felt supported. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to claim I'm perfect at it, but, uh, but she could tell I was making the effort. Right. Yeah. And, and well, she you understand it. You understand servant leadership, man. You really do. So, you know, we, 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 we just do the best we can and, and it, I'm not going to be perfect at it. And there'll probably be times where I will end up dumping too much on somebody um, in the, in the guise of delegation and, and empowerment. Um, but at least I know enough to know that that's a, a possible problem <laughs> and that I'm going to look out for it and I'm going to try to not do it. And I'm going to try to have open conversations with people, uh, as, as we move forward. Um, and I think that awareness is half the battle and, uh, you know, I have a personal commitment that, yeah, I'm going to try my very best to not do that. I'm gonna try my very best to even out the load. I'm gonna try my very best um, to, to always be willing to take on the tasks that maybe I don't wanna take on. You know, That's one of the things that, pe that leaders often do also that they call empowerment. They're really just offloading the crap work that they don't wanna do. Um, you know, Cause they feel like they're too important to waste their time doing these menial things. And so I'm just gonna, delegate and I'm going to have other people do these things. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, that makes sense. And um, you, as a leader, you want to make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to focus on your people. You're giving yourself enough time to think kind of bigger picture strategic and those sorts of things. But you also have to be willing to roll up your sleeves and just work alongside your people to do some of the crappy work that has to be done. And every yeah. job has crappy work, tedious yep. work, mind numbing work, like nobody wants to do it, but it has to be done. And it takes time and it takes some bandwidth and if you just demonstrate that yeah i'm willing to still do that work i'm still willing to roll up my sleeves and to stand aside uh, alongside you and do the work with you um, that needs to be done that sets a really important example for people and it shows that you're not putting yourself above them you're not saying you're you're more important than them or you're you're above doing this type of work um if you if if you can also keep that mindset that will in, increase your chances of having meaningful empowerment of your employees because you're, that, that will demonstrate to them that you're not just um, quote unquote delegating out all of the crappy stuff that you don't wanna do. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of leaders do, frankly. Yeah, they do. I think of some of the beloved chiefs that I had um, in my career, like they, the great ones would help you load hose you know you'd catch a you'd catch a fire or it, maybe even just a maybe even just a training round and you're dumping what's called five inch supply line which is i mean it's 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 five inch diameter supply line it's heavy and depending on how far the hydrant is from the emergency um you have to lay in a, a lot of this hose and so even after all of the work's done that's that the fun pot is the actual emergency itself. The, the work is actually cleaning this stuff up. And the great chiefs that I, that would like beloved uh, by the guys were the ones who didn't do all of the cleanup, but 
you'd catch them going and, 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 and dragging a couple of hoses back. Or maybe they would jump up on the engine and they would just help load because it takes, it takes a long time to actually to load this stuff back because it has to be deployed in a very specific way. It's just, it's remembering where you came from and not thinking, that's humility, okay? It's remembering where you came from and not thinking that you're above it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And nobody expects you, especially you in your position, nobody expects you to be, you know, down there doing all of the menial tasks. But man, when somebody's struggling to carry something, you're like, hey, let me, let me help you out. That goes a long way. It goes a long way to building credibility and trust and relationships to where people realize that it's that, it's that simple saying, I got your back which is at the heart of empowerment, right? There's a lot of people when we talk about that um, exploitation of your people. At the heart of empowerment and the way it works is, is if they know their leaders actually have their back in their decisions that, you know, like you know that, yeah, they're empowering you and they have your back when things are good, but when something goes wrong or maybe you call the wrong shot, right? Maybe you just call the wrong shot and something goes wrong they're still going to have your back. They're not going to throw you under the bus. Uh, in organizations where people don't believe that their leaders have their back, it's that much more difficult to empower to your followers because your followers are so afraid to make decisions because they think that they're going to be, you know, destroyed if something goes wrong. It's, and that that relationship, that trust, that credibility, that humility, all of those things come in to build that leader follower relationship. And once that's strong and your people are capable because you help them grow, empowering and delegating to them is very simple. You know? And that that's the that's the other side of empowerment is do your followers believe that if something goes wrong, you have their back? And I can say I was lucky in all of my career. And even now in academia, I've always felt that my leaders have had my immediate supervisors. I've had a couple of problems, but for the most part, I've always felt like my leaders always had my back as an officer. And even as an academic, they have my back where they empower me to do X. And if something goes wrong or it just doesn't work out, they're not going to be like, this guy's, this guy's toast and, and throw me under the bus. Like I just... I've been lucky in my career to not work for, for people like that for the most part. Not that I haven't, but the vast majority of people that I've had, that I've been able to work for, I always knew had my back after they've empowered me or delegated something to me. Yeah. Well, that's great. And, and like you said, it's, it's, it's fundamentally built on relationships of trust. Uh, you can't truly have a, an empowerment culture without a trust culture. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I don't know, you know, to the extent that, um, you know, you're trying to just be positive about your experiences with your leaders or, or what, um, you know, I, I, as I'm thinking about my own experience with various leaders, I would say it's been a very mixed bag for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I've definitely had really good leaders, but I've had some, I've had some really horrible ones that were truly some of the worst people I've ever known in my life that were just mm. like, I would, I would frame them as like evil people. <laughs> I've had, I've had that. Yeah. 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 That's, and that's, not many, that's, though. that's rough. That's rough. And then I've had some really good ones and then I've, but I've had, had, you know, a good share of people who probably are well-intentioned, but they're not particularly thoughtful about their approach and they just, whether it's on purpose or not, they they basically exploit a lot of people around them. Right. And I, again, I think that's, I think that tends to kind of be the default mode um, for a lot of people because they just, people in their leadership style, they're reflecting their own experiences, their own background, what, what they've seen other leaders in their life do. Um, because most leaders haven't, you know, had a lot of training in leadership, really. They just kind of move up and they find themselves in, in roles of responsibility. So their, their style is reflective of what they've seen before. And so, you know, I, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that they're trying to be harmful or they have any intention to, but you know, they're, they're, they're the outcomes of their 
their practice is that people do get exploited. And so we just have to be very mindful of that. We have to be aware of it and try to take steps um, to avoid it. Build a trust relationship um, th that will help us build an empowerment relationship. Don't put yourself above your people. Be willing to work right alongside them. Um, don't just delegate the crap work that you don't want to do because um, people see that. They, under they realize that. They just realize that you think you're above doing that kind of work. And that's not empowerment. That's just exploitation. So I think um, there, there's a lot more we could probably talk about in relation to this, but I, I think this has been a really good overview of these concepts and how they are so fun. How, it's so important that they're built on a foundation of servant leadership. Um, before we wrap up today, Eric, any last word on the topic? Uh, just that people understand that when you meet the needs of your followers and your followers grow and you can empower them and delegate authority to them, it frees you up as a leader from the binds of managing. And we've actually published research on that with some C-suite leaders where we looked at the, the self, um, the self interest to being a servant leader, the rational selfishness decision to become a servant leader. And that's really what it's about is when your people grow and they can be empowered and delegated to, it frees you up as a leader to focus on being a steward for the organization, cultivating a vision and a, and a, you know, and conceptualizing a pathway forward. Um, it, it really is a, it's a rational self, interest it's 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 in your own self interest to grow your followers so you can empower them because it frees you up um, to to reach those next levels of where you want to go to yeah and and just remembering that you can do things that are in your own self interest that are also in the interest of others. That's like right. These are not mutually exclusive ideas. No, they're not. <laughs> and you know what? When you do things in the benefit of both you and others, and you and others succeed, yeah, people don't build guillotines. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's sustainable success. So that's right. That's what we're going for. Well, Eric, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. And I hope listeners, um, We'll also go back and check out previous um, episodes in our Servant Leadership series. Um, to everyone, I hope you stay healthy and safe. Have a wonderful week, and I hope you uh, have a great and meaningful time at work. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.